a specially extended news bulletin with Martin Lewis. You probably know coal light burns without smoke. But not a lot of people know that coal light is specially made to give you up to a third more heat. Less smoke, more heat. There's a bit of an argument going on in the lager world. Is it better to brew lager with 100% barley, as we do at Tuborg, to give a full round flavour? Or is it better to top the barley up with maize, as most brewers do these days? Now maize has far less flavour than barley, so you have a choice. Do you like your lager lightened with maize? Or do you like it neat? Mel Gordon was born on Christmas Day, 1924. The TV Times magazine takes you through the years since then, from a two-year-old performer to her early walk-on part, the war years. Her first appearance in Crossroads, which for 17 years has been her life, but what of her future? Meet her in this week's TV Times magazine, which also brings you Connie Booth, Beryl Reed, and your complete guide to the week's programmes on ITV. Don't miss it. Tonight, right after the news, a woman's premonition starts to come horribly true. Now, half the time you're acting crazy. Shh. Yep. What? He's here. Who is? Who is here? Was he bald by any chance? How in the hell did you know that? We found the cockpit voice recorder, that crashed airliner. The recorded conversation was exactly as you heard it. Everything. That plane crash was not an accident. Somebody put a bomb in it. Jason. Mind over murder. Right after the news. What's wrong? Jason. <laughs> And of course you can see Mind Over Murder right after our specially extended news bulletin. You're watching London Weekend Television. Now the latest world news with Martin Lewis and Peter Sissons. It's ten past nine. <laughs> IRA Murder Ulster MP, Mr Pryor appeals for calm. Space Shuttle Columbia is twelve minutes from touchdown. Are the astronauts safe? Good evening. Two stories dominate the news tonight. The murder of a member of Parliament, Mr Robert Bradford, shot by the IRA in his Belfast constituency. And will the Space Shuttle Columbia make it to touchdown in just 12 minutes' time? Peter Sissons and former astronaut Dick Gordon will be bringing us that story and the first live pictures of the shuttle after it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. But first, the assassination of the official Ulster Unionist MP, the Reverend Robert Bradford, has brought condemnation from politicians of all parties. Mr Bradford was shot by four IRA terrorists as he met his constituents at a community centre in South Belfast. The terrorists also killed a social worker, Mr Ken Campbell. A joint statement from the RUC and the Army warned of an intention to provoke virtual civil war. Mrs. Thatcher said, we shall pursue with the utmost vigour those who committed this wicked act. Mr. Bradford was killed while he was holding one of his regular Saturday morning clinics for constituents at a Belfast community centre. An armed policeman was on duty outside, but he was forced to kneel at gunpoint while the MP was shot several times in the chest and head. Terrified constituents dived for cover, as did a group of teenagers attending a disco in an adjoining hall. The operation was carried out by three gunmen who'd arrived posing as decorators. As they made their escape, there was a scuffle, and the centre's caretaker, Mr Ken Campbell, a 29-year-old social worker, was also shot dead. Mr Bradford's police bodyguard fired at the getaway car, as did another policeman, but it's believed the killers escaped unhurt. The car was found abandoned soon afterwards. It had been stolen from a Belfast family who were held hostage throughout the attack by a fourth member of the gang. Mr. Bradford became an MP in 1974. He was known for his outspoken views on law and order, capital punishment and the IRA. This evening, his widow said he knew he was a possible target. He'd been under a lot of threat for a long time. Just something we lived with. 
um, something he managed to cope with, perhaps better than I did. Um, I don't think he felt under any specific threat at this particular time, but I do get the feeling from talking to a lot of his friends that he had a sort of feeling that something was going to happen. Reaction from other unionist politicians has been swift and angry. Mr Bradford's party leader, James Molyneux, and another unionist MP, Harold McCusker, tonight condemned the recent talks between the British and Dublin governments as encouraging IRA terrorism. They'd earlier emerged clearly unhappy after talks with junior Northern Ireland minister, Nicola Scott. It was an even more inept performance than most of the other meetings I've had with government ministers. He couldn't even tell us what they were doing in the wake of Robert Bradford's murder. Uh, he still believes, despite all that's happened, that present policies and tactics, uh, tactics are appropriate. And we told him that he had to mobilise all law-abiding decent citizens in this province in defence of themselves. The immediate future of Ulster holds that Ulster people must demonstrate to the British government that enough is enough. We've uh -huh. come to the end of the road. We're entering a new era as from this very hour. Mr Bradford is the fifth person to be murdered in Northern Ireland in the past week. The fact that an MP has now fallen victim to terrorist gunmen has sharply increased tension within the community and heightened fears that more sectarian violence will follow. Already tonight, a 19-year-old Catholic youth has been shot and wounded at his North Belfast home. Tim Ewart, ITN, Belfast. After the murder of Mr Bradford, the Northern Ireland Secretary, Mr Pryor, spoke of his horror and revulsion, and he made a special appeal for there to be no retaliation. I appeal to everyone to keep calm, to keep and place their trust in the security forces, and not to let justifiable anger be vented on other equally innocent people. Another member of Parliament was the target of an IRA attack last night. The Attorney General, Sir Michael Havers, says only good fortune kept him away from his London home when it was badly damaged by a bomb. A full report and the rest of today's news later in the programme. But now we're minutes away from the return of Columbia. In our space studio, Peter Sissons and the astronaut Dick Gordon are watching for news of the astronauts as the shuttle heads for home. Peter? Well, let me say straight away, at this stage in the descent of the first test flight, we had some extremely good pictures of that descent because the weather was so clear. We haven't got those pictures yet, but we hope to have them any minute. Our viewers, Dick, joined the descent with the difficult bit over. I believe they have. They're coming into the terminal area phase now, which is about 82,000 feet, Mach 2.5, and they're very shortly to land in about eight minutes. And they're on the glide slope, they're, everything's going fine. They came out 25 miles south of the track, they're back on it, and there we have it in sight. Visual acquisition on TV. Out of 100,000 feet, mark 3.6, you have positive seats. The little tiny dot in the centre, in case your TV set isn't, uh, isn't immaculate. The positive seat call means that they can use the seats in case they have a problem. They can eject to save themselves yes. if they need to. But it doesn't look like that. Doesn't look like it. Four times the speed of sound. Twice the speed of Concord. <laughs> That's about right. And about twice as high as uh, Concord can go. 90,000 feet and a range of 74 miles. There's one of the chase planes that will be picking it up soon. They fired their uh, deorbit burn just about, just under an hour ago at 137 miles high. And here they are on the glide slope. Houston, Columbia, data looks good on board. All Roger, nav data is ex excellent. All data is good. Their energy management is good. So it, uh, it should look just like the last one. Now, who's flying it now, Dick? Uh, Joe Engel's flying this at the present time. Columbia, Houston, you can take the air data. Welcome. Air data is good. He's going in and out of control stick steering, which is manual, in and out of auto to manual to do a bunch of tests. And he will fly around the approach circle manually and then go to automatic control for the first portion of the approach and landing phase. As we watch this, uh, watch this sensational. Roger. Let's just remind our viewers, Dick, that uh, there were a historic series of maneuvers with the pilot actually with his hands on the stick on this descent. And we have a wind update for you and a weather update. Uh, you've got a very thin layer at 25,000. The winds airborne are as brief and on the ground 220, 18 knots, gusting to 24. 
Altimeter is 30, decimal 07. You got 60 miles viz underneath. Over. Hey, good. Sounds like a good old ready day. <laughs> Yes, sir. Looks like a few thin clouds there to come around, but uh, they've got all the data that they need. And there's probably no more. They won't experience pilot than Dick. No, I think uh, Joe and Dick had flown the approach and landing phase test, and now they're doing it again, the same thing. As a test pilot, Joe had about 30 tests to make during re-entry. Triangle continuing to fly the test maneuvers. He flew that rocket plane X-15 some yes. 16 times. So he's he's well versed at this phase of the flight. Got his astronaut's wings 15, 16 60, years ago. Yes. Houston, that's your convenience. Transfer the state vector from the past to the BFS. You're almost done Rick. Say again, please. Roger, a state vector transfer past the BFS. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you very much. The state vector is nothing more than navigational information. Looks like we've got a few DJI chase planes out there. Fifty thousand feet, Mach one, range twenty-seven miles. Should explain that Joe got his astronaut's wings in the X-15 by going more than fifty Mark. miles high. Yes, he did. Nineteen sixty-four. Roger, you're tracking right down the line. So he's on ground track. Approaching the heading alignment circle now. That's called a what is it? A hundred thousand ton glider? Hundred thousand feet. <laughs> hundred ton tons. glider. Point eight. <laughs> Twenty-two miles. Two hundred thousand pounds of glider. Lummy Houston, we show you intercepting the hack. And a reminder, you've got the strong winds out of the west. Now out of the. That's the heading alignment circle feet. around the approach end of the runway. You'll see him in a constant left-hand turn. And as he comes out of this turn, he'll be lined up directly with the runway. And it's the same runway as the first test we landed on. Yes, it is. Runway 23 at Edwards Air Force Base in California. They were going to try a crosswind landing, but uh, crosswind was just a little too strong for them. They decided to go back in a 2-3. There's moisture in the sky out there. He's pulling some... Uh, 25,000 feet. I mean, Houston, about 3,000 feet low now, out of 24,000 feet. Roger that. Handshakes were showing 290 at uh, 20,000. 290 knots. Okay, we're about to be with you at 19. Check, body flap to manual. Roger that, body flap to manual. We gotta have a chase plane joining up with him pretty quick. 280 knots at 18,000 feet. They'll be down in about two minutes now, Dick. And has Joe Engel got it under his own control now? He might be in automatic landing phase right now. He okay, will, speed break sweep start now. He will take Roger, over. Still just slightly low on the energy, looking okay. At about 2,000 feet, just before he flares, they're doing a speed break test now for more aerodynamic data. For a short distance from touchdown, he's still getting test pilot information. And you see the chase plane looking at his uh, heat shield underneath those famous tiles. Been no reports of any failure there at all. We haven't heard a word of tile problems at all. Slightly below glide slope. You're below the glide slope. You have a go for auto land. Okay, Rick. Thank you, sir. This is a microwave terminal phase guidance he's into right now. It's an automatic. Now, would it land if he took his hands off? No, it could take it down to the flare, but Joe has to land it from that point. Just over a minute to touchdown now, Dick. Coming down in about a 20 degree glide Speed slope. Speed brake auto. Okay. Speed brake, body flap, auto, everything's auto. Thank you. Speed brake to auto helps him control airspeed, about 265 knots. And as we said before, for Joe Engel, this is very nearly routine after all his work in the simulator and on the, the prototype. He flew Enterprise a little bit like this. Now he's just doing it with the second one called Columbia. About a minute away from touchdown. Now what's the betting that they'll actually put it on the black marks on the run runway where Crippen and Young fell? I imagine there are some bets on this one. <laughs> <laughs> we know a little bit more about the aerodynamics, so he has a better chance. 
The chase plan, of course, counts them down the last he, 100 feet. He calls the last uh, 10 feet of altitude and verifies his airspeed. So he's going to know what he's doing. Yeah, he can run into the ground, too. <laughs> 3,500 feet. 250 knots. 2,500 feet, speed brakes are closed, we're at 270 knots. He's right on. Chase He will start to flare at about 17 hours. Clear land, link that 2-3, wind 2-1 is running. Okay. In good shape. By flare you mean what? Just rotate, the gear's coming down. He will rotate to break the rate of descent. That starts to flare and he's already done that, the gear's down. 50, 30, 20, 10. Five, a little dust three, on the runway. Touchdown. He's done. Nose gear 15. He didn't bounce that. He has improved a little bit. 10. 10. As good as a Navy pilot, yeah. Dick? Well, Five, that's hard to say. Three. Touchdown. Welcome home. Look at that. That Thank is a gem sight. And the whole point about it is that we've now seen it twice. We've seen it before. Time and that time that is truly is a reusable vehicle. Hours, 13 minutes, 10 seconds. Which is very near Repeat the Repeat that uh, mission elapsed time for touchdown. Two days, six hours, 13 minutes, 10 seconds. Okay, Joe, it's a great day for the Ace Moving Company. Welcome home. Over to Steve Nagel now. Okay. Columbia, Houston. So, Columbia has landed again, and the age of the shuttle has truly arrived. England truly then entered the history books as the first men to reuse a spaceship, and in doing so, they take sp space exploration forwards by another giant step. We leave them for now on that runway, but uh, don't leave us. After the break, the rest of today's news and sport. Join us then. New All Clear clears dandruff effectively and with regular use can stop it coming back. All Clear is a dandruff shampoo that comes in three special types for dry, greasy and normal hair. So All Clear cares about more than just clearing dandruff. New All Clear clears dandruff and cares for hair. A lot of people are taking their Bristol cream with nowadays. The only thing you need to add to Bristol cream is a few friends. So we take it without. With, darling? With? With? With or without ice. Harvey's Bristol cream. The best sherry in the world. The train is now approaching. Hello. Uh, I have to go to Edinburgh to meet my cousin. A single? No, he's married, actually. The ticket. The, oh, sorry. <laughs> Return. <laughs> oh, that'll leave me short. Try platform shoes, then. <laughs> it's access. Going off the rails again, money? Let me pay and we can settle up later. So you could say you're just a ticket access. <laughs> oh, no. Access. Your flexible friend. The Attorney General Sir Michael Havers says only luck prevented him from being killed by last night's IRA bomb explosion at his home in Wimbledon, South London. Sir Michael, who was in Spain with his wife, decided only at the last minute to delay their return home until today. There was no warning, 